Welcome back to DXB Today, where now we delve even deeper into the power of the mind when it comes to public speaking, memory, and even some sales training. So we have the man himself, Mr. Josh McCartney, in the studio to talk about it. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you for having me, man. So I've described a lot of things that you do, but tell us a little bit about Thrive, your company. So I train people mainly in public speaking as well as accelerated learning. So accelerated learning is where all the memory techniques come in. And that was actually mainly my history it was in memory training. So I did a TEDx event on it and I've been training for it for about six years now. Amazing. I know Nimi's got questions. <laughs> yeah, I do. Well, firstly, I want to touch on the, on the memory thing because, I mean, I'm 32 years old, but I would say pretty much my whole life I've had a really bad memory. I just can't seem to pick things up. Are you inherently born with good memory or is it something that you can actually develop? Memory is something you can actually develop. Yeah. And you'll notice as well that you are probably, you're probably very good at remembering things that you're interested in, right? Mm -hmm. So in school, the subjects you actually liked, you probably did pretty well in, right? right? Yeah. When you're interested in somebody at a party, you remember their name, mm -hmm. right? So motivation actually comes towards your ability to remember information as mm -hmm. well as your focus. So if you aren't focused on something, you're not paying attention, the information is gonna go in one ear mm -hmm. and out the other. Mm -hmm. So memory is a skill, skills can be trained. Okay. Josh, I wanted to ask you, is it possible to have very good memory in some things and really bad in some others? Like my ex-husband, for example, I could remember what he did in the summer of 2015, <laughs> what he was wearing, how he said it, how many times he said it. What did he do? Everything. I'll tell yeah, you what. Well. <laughs> but for the life of me, I cannot remember more important and relevant things like paying the phone bill. The only way I know is when the Wi-Fi stops working. So is it possible that you can have a very strong memory, like better than the cloud for some things and really poor for some other things? Absolutely. A lot of the time, your memories stick in based on the emotion that you feel towards it. So you remember most parts of your life based on the emotion you have. You can remember really scary dreams, the times you laughed so hard that you cried, your breakups, the traumatic experiences you've had because they're emotional, right? So when your husband does something that you don't like, maybe. Ex-husband. Ex-husband. <laughs> Even better. <laughs> she, she really looks like it. <laughs> it was a really bad memory, apparently. So that will brand in and sear into your memory as a long-term memory. So information, when it's paired with emotion, becomes a long-term memory, okay? So when you add emotion, then it becomes easy to remember. If you don't really care about something, why would you remember it? <laughs> like paying bills. Yeah, and, and, and I was just reading a paper which says 1700 percentage is going to be the rise of Alzheimer's disease. By the way, for people who don't know what Alzheimer's disease is all about, is like a dementia where people can lose orientation, memory of course, and then people can have also many other problems because it's a degenerative process. Your brain is dying down, right? So how about these memory techniques and memory exercises which can actually keep your brain alive and not go into that route of having a dementia? Well, just like any area of health, prevention is normally key, right? So starting to train your brain from a younger age is going to help you mainly, right? So a lot of the time, focus is one of the biggest issues that people have, especially as you start to get older. You have so many different tasks going on. And nowadays, the age of information, we're constantly scrolling the phone. Everybody's always distracted. And by the way, that's called digital dementia. Digital dementia, so exactly. Only a term which exactly. Is there, you know, so. And it's the same as when people have head injuries and concussions. It's actually the brain scan is the same as digital dementia nowadays, right? So it's really important to start training your brain. And the way that we can do that is through associations. Mm -hmm. So when we're learning information, rather than just letting it absorb and hopefully it's going to sit in, try to connect it to something you already know. Try to create an interesting picture, some sort of visual, try to connect emotion. If you can tie it to a memory that you have, then you dual encode that memory. Can we do as an well. example right now? We can. What would you like to remember? I would like to remember this very moment. Well, it's easy because we're already in the location. All so, right. location is. I'd one like of the to remember my graduation. Your graduation, okay. What part of your graduation would you like to remember? Uh, receiving my diploma. Receiving your diploma, okay. Well, let's make it an actual imaginative process. So, I want you to imagine you're walking on here, you're walking in from the stage, and you're super excited because you got A pluses in all of your subjects, right? <laughs> Shh, don't tell him. <laughs> so, we're walking in, you've got what color robe are you wearing right blue. now? Blue. Blue, you're wearing a blue robe, amazing. You've got a little hat. Yeah. What's the material made out of? Uh, velvet. Velvet material, so it's nice and velvety and kind of silky kind of thing, right? And you're walking up onto the stage, you walk up onto a little pedestal here, and who's gonna give the award, the diploma? Who's giving the award? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. Okay, so you're imagining giving the actual diploma to him right there now. There you go, Ferris. Amazing, fantastic. <laughs> now, what does the paper feel like? Uh, it feels like paper. Does, is it, <laughs> does it have some sort of binder or anything like that? Uh, no, it has, it's in a cardboard casing. Oh, okay, amazing, so it's a cardboard casing. What's the feeling that you're having right now? Uh, uh, relief. Relief. Amazing. So all <laughs> so the years of studying, all the stress, all the late nights have come down to this exact moment sitting here on this chair, getting handed the diploma after you walked on stage, right? So from that, I've added in sensory mm -hmm. information into the, into the memory, right? So when you're trying to remember something, try to make it so real that your brain can't forget it. 
It's not about trying to remember something, it's about trying to make it hard to forget. Mm -hmm. So when you add in sensory information, like touching it, smelling it, lick the cardboard paper in your mind, right? right. Feel the texture on your tongue. And imagine the sound of her heels walking over to give you the diploma, right? When you start adding in sensory information, and then we start adding in emotions into the memory, then it starts to sear in and it becomes very, very easy to remember. Josh, I would love to know, is there anything that you do first thing in the morning or anything in your daily routine that any of us can implement to make our brain more powerful? Try not to go on your phone straight away. Okay. That would be one thing. <laughs> <laughs> Hydrate. <laughs> a lot of this is the basic stuff that most people know, right? Okay. So in terms of improving a memory day to day, you don't need to do any fancy memory techniques. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A lot of it is information that you already know. Okay. So do focus techniques. Try to focus on one thing at one time. Your brain can't multitask, it's not possible, right? So focus on one thing at one time for longer periods of time. When you do that, you get better at it. Do some meditation, do some mindfulness. Mm. Actually set up your day from the beginning to be focused because your intent from the morning carries through throughout the day. So if you wake up and the first thing you do is check all the chaos in the world, your brain's gonna be distracted. Your brain's gonna be like, oh, everything's going wrong right now, right? Mm. But if you wake up with intent of today, I'm going to check off these items. Yeah. I'm going to make sure to focus my brain and be intentful and actually be serious about what I want to remember for that day. Mm. It'll start naturally already increasing your memory anyway. Mm. It's a lot of stuff that you already know, but most people don't apply it. Yeah, it's about so the execution, isn't it? It's about the execution. Information for information's sake doesn't do anything. I want to remember my graduation too, but then I remember I'm a dropout, so it's just a <laughs> memory I would like to forget. Me too. <laughs> I'd high five you, but you five. We can definitely make up a fake one. Uh, Josh, I, I think Dr. Schwerter probably graduated. <laughs> <laughs> Inshallah. In, enough for all of us, I think. Uh, Josh, I want to thank you so much for your time uh, and for sharing some tips with us here today. So thanks. Thank you very much. For joining us. Um, Ash, DXB in 60, so over to you. Right, Dr. Shweta, so we are going to pick your brain a little bit. Are you ready for this? Okay, so this is called DXP in 60. You need to answer as many questions as possible within 60 seconds, all right? Your time starts now. Three, two, one, let's go. If you weren't a neurologist, what industry would you be in? Food photography. One thing you cannot live without? My computer. Your motto in life and work? Uh, let's have the limitless brains. Your hidden gem in Dubai? A uh, hidden gem in Dubai is like a little gateway in Russell Kema. Nice. If you could choose one superpower, what would it be? Uh, to remember, uh, to forget everything else and just to go to self, you know, inside. <laughs> a book you're reading at the moment? Uh, it's a book called Why Do We Sleep? Top series you've watched recently? Uh, how Do I Bend My Mind? Top podcast recommendation? Uh, one on Yoga Nidra. Most used app on your phone? Oh, wow, that's interesting. Uh, WhatsApp. <laughs> <laughs> if you could hang out with someone for 24 hours, who would it be? Oh, wow, Robin Sharma. Finally, why Dubai? Oh, wow, I love Dubai because it is diversity and harmony in diversity, you know? That's the beauty of Dubai. You know, can I tell you something, Dr. Shweta? This is the fastest and the most number of questions anyone has answered. Oh, wow. Congrats, you are in the right profession. <laughs> She's limitless, we're going to say. Yeah. Dr. Shweta, thank you so much Pleasure. for being on the show. It's been absolutely Pleasure. fascinating, and we hope to have you again. Thank you. And Josh, my friend, thank you so much for coming as well. Appreciate it. But right now, we are going to go over to our roving reporter. Shahir is over at the fridge. Well, he was. And he's going to be chatting to our performers who are going to be performing later on tonight. This is Coalescence. We are now joined by Coalescence. Guys, thank you so much for being here. Thanks. Thank you for having us. Of course, pleasure's all mine. So before we get started, can you tell me a bit more about the name and how it came about? Take it away, Chris. Basically, we like to think that we've got a real wide and varied sort of musical taste. And so this project is about bringing everything together, melding it, mashing it all up, and uh, you know, seeing what comes out, really. Speaking of taste, you have a very distinct style. How would you best describe it to someone that you're meeting for the first time? Well, pop, R&B, soul. Mm. That's mainly us, right? I would say so, yeah, yeah, yeah. We have a lot of different tastes in music that comes out in the pop, R&B, soul style, you know? Mm. Mm. And when it comes to fine tuning your tone or what you guys both agree on musically, how do you filter that out? Chelsea's the boss, so <laughs> she she gets the sort of overall creative idea, and then I help to bring that to life. Is what I would say. So uh, yeah, how do you feel around Chelsea? I mean, well, I DJ as well. Mm. So for me, when I'm like DJing, I'll sing tracks over a different track, and I'm like, oh, that's an idea, and I write it down. Mm. And that's kind of how we build our sets together, isn't yeah, it? Exactly. So yeah, that's where it comes from. And you guys are also engaged to be married. We sure are. Thank you. <laughs> 
So when it comes to balancing your personal lives and your career, where is that fine line? <laughs> I'd say it's it's uh, there's a bit of spillover at times. You know, it's very difficult to try and separate things. Um, I don't know if we have got it down perfectly, <laughs> but we we kind of do our we'll best. We'll save that for marriage. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, but. Um, <sighs> You know, you, you just kind of take each day as it comes. It's very difficult to, to keep any sort of a routine when you're a gigging mm -hmm. musician. And, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> it's very difficult to keep any kind of a routine when you're a musician. So, you know, trying to slot in what you're doing in your personal life, you know, trying to see friends, family, other bits of work, and then try and make time for everything else is a little difficult. It's a little challenging, but at least we've got each other and, you know, we're able to work through everything together. Well, look at you. <laughs> One last question before you leave us. What will you be performing for us tonight? So we'll be performing a mashup of two songs. The first one will be No One by Alicia Keys, and then we go into Price Tag by Jesse J. So yeah, check Two out. classics. Mm -hmm. Colossens, thank you so much. Um, where can people find you if they want to, you know, look you up on the gram? Coalescence Duo on Instagram, spelt. C-O-A-L-E-S-C-E-N-C-E-D-U-O. Amazing, I'll remember that. Thank you for your time. Thank you, man. Guys, stay tuned for the show right after this break.